to those 11 women previously. This talk is all me and nothing to do with anyone who's currently taking any money. So what's been happening? Um, I'll go through a bunch of different things. So this isn't just the, this is just the only thing. Um, I spent some time dumping some in, uh, some documentation into the into the wiki because we are sorely lacking uh, edX to eleven documentation. I would like some help documenting things from a user perspective. I'm quite happy to document how NetEdX to eleven works and what the features are, but things like tutorials and whatnot, I, I would like some help with. Uh, I've also started documenting the the Theros and the HAL driver. Um, I've listed all the due to popular demand. I've listed all the hardware that people. Uh, that, that's currently supported and there's a long list of it. And based on the existing driver and nothing to do with the actual uh, internal data sheets, I've been documenting what the hardware does. So plenty of questions from people about how the Etheros hardware works. Um, so I've been going through the driver and the, and the, uh, and the HAL and reverse writing documentation based on that. The plus from doing it this way is all the arrival that's not in any data sheets gets covered by what I'm dumping into the wiki page, wiki pages. So it's, there's only a few things there at the moment to do with calibration. Um, I'm, as I find spare time, I'm doing that. We've done a bunch of work in NetEdit 2.11. So Bernard and I, uh, firstly Bernard, uh, upgraded the NetEdit 2.11 N negotiation code from an early draft up to what the specification was. It wasn't all that much work, but that goes to show how long our 11N code sat there doing nothing. Um, I went through and found a bunch of weird locking issues that I went and fixed. Went and updated some of uh, the 11N stuff, including uh, channel width change and aggregation. Uh, we've got a new, um, a new committer who's been Montagar, who's been working on updating Editor 11S mesh support from the earlier draft work that Rui did up to the what's actually made it in Editor 11 2012. Uh, I've been also working on, and he's also worked on a Wi-Fi simulator which he uses to test this out. So he doesn't exactly he doesn't need to use real hardware to do uh, protocol updates. And I've been working on radar. Uh, station and access point radar support. So 3BSD9, I think, should correctly support um, being told by the access point. In station mode, will correctly support being told by an access point. Uh, change channel and then correctly handle all the weird corner cases that occur there, such as you change to a DFS. It tells you to change to a channel which also runs DFS, and so the access point has to stay quiet for a minute. Um, the, the corner case there was, if it doesn't hear an initial beacon, it never actually d determines that there are no, there, there's nothing on the channel, and it sits there patiently for a minute, for, uh, waiting to hear the first beacon, so it knows when the next beacons are, uh, should arrive. So now it will correctly go to that channel, determine there's no access point there, and start roaming for a new access point with the same SSID. Bernard's been taking care of the Intel 11N driver support, and so he now supports 11N on all the current generation of Intel NICs that he can get his hands on. Uh, and he's actively been finding and fixing 11N issues. So if you've got an IWN NIC in 9 or head, you can use 11N right now. You don't need to wait. Um, BWN and BWI uh, need a maintainer. Uh, we've done some bug fixes, but unfortunately, uh, I'm not allowed to touch it anymore. Comes with working for a Theros. Um, um, the Marble driver also works great if you disable TX aggregation. And I'm looking into this for uh, some interoperability testing, but again, it would be nice if there was a maintainer. I can't sit there and look after the Marvel driver anymore. Um, and Bernard and Ray have been working on uh, our A-Link hardware from, uh, based on the OpenBSD code. The plan here is, is to bring up the basic mix support from OpenBSD and then contribute back whatever we find was broken and then fix up the 11N support, um, which is a lot trickier than you think. My main focus has been in, on the Etheros driver. So I was sponsored for six months of last year to finish off TX and RX aggregation handling. And, and when I dove into that pit of hilarity, I discovered all kinds of corner cases that just weren't being handled. So all of the TX and RX aggregation and pause and resume and uh, uh, software retransmit and ha bar handling, both transmission and reception, channel width change support, all of that supported now in head. Um, I've updated, I imported the 9287 support from the Theros reference code base and I fixed up the Merlin and Kite support, the 9280 and 9285 support, again from the Theros code base. So all of those chips, everything up to 9287 is now working and stable, as far as I can tell, um, and I've done some pretty, uh, I've done some pretty uh, in-depth noise testing there, and all the users of those chips now report pretty much no bugs that couldn't be traced back to a really noisy wireless environment or they forgot to connect an antenna, one of those two. Um, another source of issues with the chipset support were uh, radio baseband calibration fixes. 
Uh, I ended up helping the, the Athline K developer, the Linux Athline K developers find and fix a bunch of these corner cases as well. So we ended up sort of talking to each other and fixing each other's bugs as well. So that was a, a, an example of Linux and BSD cross development that actually worked quite well. Um, when I fix something, he fixes it and vice versa. Um, in terms of driver support, n there were lots and lots of weird corner cases to do with concurrency, as in uh, doing a, having NetAnode Code 11 uh, request a channel change or a reset or having a stuck beacon or, or a baseband hang do a reset whilst another thread was doing TX or RX. And uh, when you reset the chip in the middle of doing TX or RX, the DMA engine has a habit of just writing random crap everywhere. This is a bad idea. That was fixed. Um, for 11N, there are, you can't drop frames. So the, the standard wireless driver uh, non-11N aggregation, if you drop a few frames and there are holes in your sequence numbers, it's fine. It's as long as the sequence number is progressing, everything's OK. Uh, but what happens with 11N and TX and RX aggregation is if you miss frames and you just increase your, seri your, your sequence number, um, there's a, there's a, there's a, it's like TCP. There's a, there's a window of frames uh, where you have to fill that window before you can continue along. And uh, software retransmission handles all the out of order stuff, will transmit you frames out of order, and it's up to the stack to reassemble them in order and pass them up in order. If you just drop frames during a, a, a reset, um, then that particular window tracking stops working. So a lot of the reset related things that just simply stopped the chip, dumped everything that was in the TX and RO queues away, and then continued, that all needed to be addressed. And again, corner cases there needed to, to happen. And the rate control code has been extended to support 11N enough for me to be able to use 11N. Um, it's, the rate control code is, is, is pretty modular. If someone wanted to port the rate, the, rate, the rate control code from Linux or wanted to write their own 11N rate control code, please do. Um, I would love it if someone took that over. There's plenty of interesting things you can do there. But again, 11N works fine for me. That's all that matters. So what's missing for 11N? Uh, well, NATO 2.11 does a pretty good job now. The only thing it doesn't really do is power saving, and I'll cover that in a minute. So all of the 11N negotiation fixes are in 9, but we haven't backported them all to 8. Some of them has just been because we haven't bothered. Um, I've, made an, I've made a point of not backporting anything at all, unless it's a very small driver fix. And some of them, backporting to 8 would break the ABI. And so someone else, again, so I'd like someone else who, who is focused on 9 or 8 support to pick that project up and run with it. I, as much as I'd love to be able to just keep MFC things, I treat 9 and 8 as snapshots of stuff that either worked or didn't. And then whenever someone gives me a bug report, I say, does it work on 9, does it work on 8? Hopefully, it says it worked on 8. If it, if, it, if, it, if it worked on 8 and didn't work on 9, I'll go and fix it. But almost all of them have been something along the lines of, it didn't work in nine, 8, it didn't work in 9, and it works in head. Right? And that, I basically use them as a, as a comparison point. Um, IWN just works, um, and it works in 9, uh, but it actually backports stuff. So people who are using IWN on 9, it should just work 11N and otherwise. Someone popped up to say that he's, got, he's having crashes in 9 stable, and I've asked him very nicely to report them to the FreeBSD wireless list. So yeah, if you want 11N right now, IWN will do perfectly fine. M, the, the Marvel driver works again, but there's some weird situation with setting up TX aggregation. So if you disable that in head, everything works fine. I actually get 60, 70 megabits of received throughput on, Mar on the Marvel, supported Marvel mix with 11N. The Theros stuff is, uh, works extremely well in head only. And I can get up to 150 meg t like unidirectional TCP and 280 meg unidirectional UDP using a Theros, the relevant a Theros mix. I'm not backporting 11N to 9. I'm just going to say that right now. It's somebody else's job. It's a big job. There's a lot, a lot has changed between 9 and head. And uh, I don't want to be responsible for trying to make 9 work as well. Uh, as I said, if somebody else wants to, feel free. Um, the only thing that doesn't, the two things that don't work is scan doesn't work because, again, scan simply drops all the traffic in the queues and then changes channel. And so a lot of stack and driver changes are needed to actually queue, the, the, queue that traffic, do the scan, and then resume from where you left off. Um, or you do the Linux thing, which is you drop all the traffic and then you slide the, the, the sequence number along so there are no holes. One of, the, one of them needs to be done. Um, you don't scan during live traffic for the same reason. So background scan does it when there is no traffic. And scan you can request at any point in time. You do a scan during live traffic, the same thing happens. Any active in-flight traffic gets dropped, goes off channel, does a scan, comes back, and then your 11N session hangs. And AP's power save mode needs to be fixed. And that's on my short-term to-do list. So the current issues in Nenode 2.11 is a lack of sensible locking. So 
Um, there are just lots and lots and lots of different places where commands and, and, and traffic can happen. And uh, I've listed some of them there. So if you have uh, overlapping TX and RX, it mostly works fine. But if you have overlapping TX and RX and someone comes along and does a channel change, uh, you can have an annoying situation where you know, the driver is basically asked, can you please change the channel whilst you're sending traffic? And again, weird shit happens. Um, there are also some, uh, there is also some issues with re-entrance where an RX completion will trigger a, a TX from the IP stack or the TCP stack. So the easiest way to do this is ICMP. Every time you send a, every time it receives an ICMP request, it's gonna send an ICMP echo reply every single time. And so the driver, you can't just simply get around issues by holding locks for long periods of time. So the minute you hold a lock over passing your frame back up to the stack, you're gonna re-enter the stack somehow and you end up with lock recursion and all kinds of dirty crap. Um, there's some issues with handling uh, IEEE 802.11 node structs, which is the representation of individual stations. Uh, the summary here is atomic operations uh, for reference counting don't replace locks. So uh, the, the, the basic issue here is if thread A wants to decrement the reference count, thread B wants to increment it, and thread A manages to decrement it to zero and free it before thread B, in the middle of the bit of assembly that takes the pointer, copies it to do some lo local work off the stack and returns it. There's a tiny race condition there which can actually fire and, and the, the reference code will actually increment a zero reference count to one on a node that's been freed. And it doesn't sound like a condition that happens very often, but what happens with ioctal, and what happens here is, is the uh, host APD or WPA supplicate will issue an ioctal, which will, do a, which will trigger off something on a task queue that happens in one thread, and then in its own context will also do something that triggers some kind of a node operation. They will actually work in parallel every time. Yeah, well the way the code used to work was the reference code, the reference count was always held, the initial reference count was always held by the list. And nodes, when, they, when their reference count reached one, meant that nothing else besides the stack, or besides the list held that reference. And so you would, you would say, I don't need the node anymore. The reference code would hit one, and then it would be garbage collected later on, right? So the, even if you had a stale reference, it was still pointing to a, a valid but going away node, right? Whereas now, there is no list holding the reference. It can, it can be garbage collected at any time. And that was, a, that was a change done by, by Sam a few years ago to fix issues where um, nodes, in particular the BSS node, which was what kept the state of the current network, you, it would create a new node every time it needed to change some, some thing about the BSS, some kind of configuration thing. And in a noisy environment, you'd constantly be creating and, and, and destroying this BSS node, and you could end up with hundreds of them sitting there waiting for this 30-second garbage collection. So we changed it so it could immediately be freed. But this is the side effect is it, it, on SMP machines, this particular issue creeps up quite often. So I need to fix that at some point. Um, but yes, you're right. The reference counting is in the wrong place. So. Um, and the, the other issue here is with uh, a, a, an example of there being no locking. So this particular function will actually replace the BSS node and remove the reference to it. But there's no locking around that. So if thread A calls this function to update a node, thread B wants to use it to do something like, say, receive a packet for the network, then it can actually end up trying to receive a frame using a node that has just been freed underneath it, from underneath it. This is another one of those stupid race conditions. So I need to, as I said, this is the sort of stuff that requires me to actually fix the locking. Drivers have the same problem with concurrency. And I can't hold locks during TX and RX completion. So the way that, uh, that the Intel driver gets around it is he hold, the, the lock is held for, these, for any operation, for the entirety of the operation, Every operation, the, the nodes, block, the, the the driver locks held, but then he releases it to receive a frame and then locks it again, without re-checking that all the state of the node is still valid, right? And so, so for example, if you're in the middle of receiving a list of frames and uh, the driver wants to change the channel or do a reset, then you know the reset function will stall, waiting for the lock to be released. You're in the middle of reset uh, of receiving a frame, so you'll receive the frame, unlock to pass it up the stack, at which point the reset occurs finishes occurring and then the RX path still uh, continues along, right? Instead of the RX path saying, no, you can't reset, reset the, the, the uh, driver until I've finished receiving what was on the RX queue. So we need to fix that. That's a general driver problem. Um, power saving is a pain in the ass, especially with 11N aggregation, because we need to actually make sure we do legitimately leak one frame at a time whenever the, um, 
whenever the uh, station actually sends a Pierce pole frame. And because some frames are in the power saving queue and some frames are in the IFNet queue and some frames are in the, are actually being given to the hardware to send before the station went to sleep, I need to make sure that not only do, do all the frames that we're sending to a station get correctly failed and then put back on a retry list, but we don't retry retrying them until either the station wakes up and sends us a null data frame or the station sends us a PS poll frame and then I need to leak them in order. I need to ask the driver, do you have anything in your particular queue that you need to leak? Yes, no, no. Is there anything on the power saving queue that I need to leak to this driver? Yes, no, otherwise no. Uh, just wait. Um, and that's a bit of a pain, but I have a plan. Um, it's basically like TLT. Um, and I need to plan out some better locking. So people have talked about uh, batching frames in drivers and the, ne the network stack instead of set having them handled one at a time. So what I'm thinking of doing in NetAdo 211 is Instead of just doing the link solution, which is to grab a lock before you do anything in the 8 to 11 stack, um, I plan on doing something along the lines of, instead of handling the frame one at a time, create an mbuff an, an frame list from the driver of, say, n frames, say, n is 16 frames, inside the lock, and then unlock the driver, pass those frames up to the stack, and then relock the driver, and it, check the st that, that the state hasn't changed to continue along. So that way, whenever I'm either completing a TX frame or I'm handling an RX frame, I'm not grabbing and releasing a lock every single time I, 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 uh, I handle a frame. And, so I, and I'm also doing it outside of any driver locking context. So what I'll pass up to NetAdo 211 will be a list of frames. And then the, the, uh, the other input function will only ever handle one frame at a time But for now. But the nice thing about this is when doing aggregation at you know, n number of tens of thousands of packets a second or doing 11AC where I can get a million frames a second over the air, um, I'm not having to pass a frame up to the stack and then have it try to figure out whether it needs to be reordered and hold in a reorder queue and then slide the window along. I can pass it 32 frames and it can operate on that list and see what needs to be reordered in that list. So what am I working on next? Fixing all the crap I just said was broken is the summary of this slide. Um, I'm also going to import the, uh, the current generation of 11N code from the Etheros HAL rather than from AF9K. Um, I had some more permission to do this. I just need to sit down and, and uh, clean up the code and submit it for the internal stuff. Um, so that probably will appear in the next two or three months uh, when I've got some spare time. And that will get us support up to their current generation and their next generation of 11N products, but won't support 11AC, which I'll cover in a minute. Um, and I hopefully will fit, find some time to do documentation. Uh, what's coming up? All of the BSDs need better regulatory support. It all sucks, is the 30-second version, and we're probably not actually regulatory compliant. At least in FreeBSD, our regulatory database is, a couple, is more than a couple of years old and um, doesn't have all, is missing some new frequencies. Is missing, I've updated some uh, updates for the weather radar holes that you're not supposed to transmit on anymore. That, that's the sort of stuff that I need to sync. And what I'm hoping I can do is work with the Linux guys that have a, have a regulatory database and find a way to import it into BSD so that all the BSD projects can simply use this code. Um, uh, that's, and he, and the, 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 the regulatory code that, li that Lewis wrote is actually IC licensed, it's not GPL. Um, we need DFS and radar support in order to actually work as an access point in five gigahertz. At the moment, people will just configure a DFS channel and won't have radar support. And I've seen people do this by hacking the regulatory domain database so they can get access to the DFS frequencies. This is a no-no, and if anyone notices, you'll get in trouble. And we've had issues of this at work where we've had reports from our commercial customers going into their firmware and selecting debug mode from a commercial product that's not supposed to let you change country code, not that you're supposed to disable radar. Plenty of uh, network equipment vendors do this. Right? And it's a no-no. Not because we don't want you to do it, but because the FCC and various European re uh, regulatory bodies don't, want, uh, aren't, don't allow you to do this. So all of the BSD projects need to, fit, uh, to, to uh, in my opinion, try and get their act together over this. The missing part from the Etheros side is a radar detector, which um, we're working with a group, uh, Linux uh, a using company to write an open source one, and then I'm going to lift that verbatim uh, as an IC license thing and drop it into BSD. Um, and there's per packet and dynamic power control, which is a, uh, a pain in the ass if you don't have a spectrum analyzer. But the basic, the basic premise here is, instead of configuring your access point to transmit at the, highest, at the highest TX power to every single node, you use low power for nodes that are close to you, you use high power for nodes that are far away from you, so you end up using less 
power and leaking less RF, especially if you're in a, you know, if you're at home. You don't need to have high TX power to speak to your laptop that's next to your access point. Um, that's part. That's actually another requirement in some in, in some channels. We also should look at what we need for 11 AC. That's currently going through the standards body at the moment and may appear in the next few months. Um, uh, Broad Broadcom has announced hardware. Veros have announced hardware. Broadcom have some sample hardware. This is actually happening. Um, it's a, up to 1.2 gig over the air. It's a million frames a second. It's not, it's not wireless really anymore. It's not the same kind of low speed packet throughput that, that people expect. It looks a lot more like Ethernet. We'll have the same problems that the Ethernet guys do. So we can't just simply do naive locking anymore in order to get performance. Um, so we probably want to give that a bit of thought. Uh, what BSD is lacking is developers, especially ones that like porting drivers from other operating systems. Um, I've explicitly stated that I'm not going to port any drivers from any other operating systems. I have enough of my own problems to deal with at the moment. So if someone wants to port the, uh, the, the 11N mix from, say, um, open, up, uh, open BSD or Linux over to FreeBSD, I'm happy to take the code and massage it and test it and comment on it and commit it. But I'm not going to do the legwork. I need help. Uh, we also need maintainers for the other drivers. There's a lot of activity in uh, Linux for uh, updated chipset support, and then, open, and then OpenBSD simply slurps all of the uh, code in. Either if it's IC license, they slurp it in, or if it's not IC license, they re-implement it. So we could, as a project, simply leverage that as well and, and then push out fixes that we make. Um, if someone cares about um, uh, Lucent, Prism, Mic 11 Meg, the old gold and silver PC cards, please come and speak to me. I know what's wrong with it. I just don't want to fix it. Um, the NICs that are, that, are basic, the, the, the NICs that are basically looked after, so if you want to use 11N or, or any other wireless on FreeBSD, is a Theros, the Intel NICs, and the RA Link NICs. They're the three best supported NICs at the moment. Um, we're working on regression testing, especially with the software simulator. So now, um, we can, we're, now we're using it for doing 11S testing and regression testing. But in the future, we're going to start supporting access point mode and station mode and IBSS mode and TDMA mode. And so we can actually test the stack's behavior for all of this, for both, for both uh, new development and regression testing existing stuff. Um, if someone wants to take a rate control and extend it to do proper 11N, be my guest. Um, I'll probably do 11N 3 and 4 stream support once I get the, um, the, the current gen of 3 stream 11N NICs from Etheros in the tree. 11, the three stream NICs go up to 450 megabits. So it stopped, it's, again, you know, 300 megabits is not really wireless anymore, right? And 450 megabits is really not really wireless anymore. So uh, there are some significant uh, driver issues to make sure that that performs correctly. And finishing off power sa save support. And the final thing is actually supporting putting the NIC to sleep as a station. So access point mode, is the, the basic access point behavior is the access point's always on. And there are, there's some support in some products to put part of the access point to sleep in order to save power when you're running it off battery. But by and large, most access points leave the radio and all the radio antennas on all the time. But for station side power save, you don't just want to be able to, um, you want to basically be able to put as much of the chip to sleep and then wake it up when you want to hear a beacon and wake up when you want to, when you want to transmit. And there's all this complicated crap around making sure you don't do things like put the NIC to sleep in the middle of doing a TX or RX DMA. That's, you know, that's the kind of thing that locks up buses. So um, chances are, that we'll, when we finish the, the access point sleep stuff, we'll work on this, Bernard will work on the stack side of station sleep, and I'll work on the driver side of station sleep. And that saves significant power, very significant amounts of power. Um, so that's my talk. Does anyone have any questions? So what's the state of it? Don't turn on 11N unless you know what you're doing. So for ABG card? ABG card works fine. Right? For 11N, you can run, so you can either run 9 with the Theros. This is all assuming a Theros now, right? Okay. Um, so if you run 9 without 11N, it works fine. If you run 9 with 11N, you have to turn off TX aggregation because that's just not in the tree. But 9's driver still has sleep race issues. It still has, like, sorry, it still has reset TX RX race issues. It still drops frames when it whenever it resets. So if you, if you have the driver, say, hit stuck beacon while you're actively doing traffic, it will drop what's in the, in the queue. And the AP, um, may, the, the AP side of your aggregation session may hang for a little bit. And at least on our implementation, you can turn on AP, AMP new age, which basically says, I'm going to 
I'm going to wait until X number of milliseconds before I just declare that I'm not going to see those frames missing and then flush the queue and continue, right? So it's not as bad as it sounds, but you definitely will see traffic dips if the, if the thing ever resets. And in, and in head, it doesn't. I, can, I, have, I have a sysctl that actually forces a stuck, key, stuck peak and reset, and I can just sit there and a while true do syscontrol blur equals one done and pass 250 megabits, and it just hammers, resets the damn NIC and still manages a couple of hundred megabits. The resets on AC are fairly good. Unless you're in a really, really noisy environment or you hate, your microwave hates you, stuff like that. Well, like low by so yeah, it, as I said, ABG works fine. And I run all my boxes either, like the APs run on head and they run fine. And the uh, plenty of people run nine and head net to 11 and app. And that works fine. I made sure that works fine. Eight and head net to 11 and app don't, doesn't work because uh, the WPA supplicant and host APD were updated. And the APIs to net to 11 were updated. So you can't run eight, eight's user land with heads net editor 211. That doesn't work. So if you want to go through the effort, and the PF, I want to tell the PFSense guys this, if they want 11N, they can run eight, plus head net editor 211, plus head app, plus head WPA supplicant and, and, um, and host APD. And they have to hack the build system to do that, but if they want to, that's their problem. They should work fine, right? It's worth fine if you can set up the IPD group. Sorry? It's worth, it should work fine if you can set up the group. Yeah. Trying to keep all the things put together is probably a no, well, I can. The, the only thing that changed between eight and head was some multicast queue shit for, uh, for something, right? And that's like a, you know, it's a one line change in NetEditor 11 to support the particular multicast change, right? So I know that you can build the head app in NetEditor 11 wireless drivers in eight as a module, and that works fine. It's the user land you have to recompile. You have to recompile ifconfig, sorry, as, as well as NetEditor 11 and blah. And ifconfig is probably the pain in the ass one because heads, ifconfig doesn't compile on anything else. We don't have backwards compatibility. If devs, right? But that's uh, two days with some cooly dude problem, <laughs> right? Not supported by Adrian. I only support head. <laughs> Any other questions? Yo. Because uh, TCP won't do it quickly enough, especially in 11N when the packet transmission is, micros is, is in microseconds <coughs> now, and so. Um, the last thing that we want to do is, well, we want to do aggregation and we can quickly retransmit all of those frames on the hardware, right? We don't actually, the software can do a bit of the work, but we transmit batches of frames in the hardware. And if you just drop wireless frames, then sure, you end up with TCP sessions having to do their retransmission, but that's very stack dependent, right? And for video, if you start dropping frames with like, uh, RT, uh, like RTMP or UDP streams or even TCP video streams, um, if you drop a few too many frames, then TCP may decide to back off quite significantly and take a couple of seconds to recover, which point you've lost, right? Whereas doing retransmissions in the air is a lot cheaper and easier to do. Um, and mostly hides, la mostly hides the latency. Um, it doesn't always work that well, but for the thing, I think the thing to keep in mind for wireless is at these speeds, you will lose packets. 11N, 11N aggregation is based on the, the concept that you are going to drop at least a couple of percent of your frames. And retransmitting those is pretty easy. So you can still present a pretty reliable low latency environment up the stack. If you start presenting a, a 2 or 3% loss um, path to TCP when you're trying to do 450 megabits, it will get unhappy. Right. Anyone else? Yo. Ah, well, okay, so firmware cards are a pain in the ass because they're firmware. So you'd basically be stuck reading the Linux drivers and trying to get, say, for Marvel, trying to talk to Marvel about an NDA, right? So from the, from the Ethera side, we have an NDA program. We give people source code, sign the NDA. We give them driver docs and whatever, right? That, so from the Ethera side, it's easy. But for that, I got involved without reading the 802.11 spec because it's long. And, and I triple E spec. And if you're not that way brained, it can be quite foreboding. And to be honest, you could probably pick up maintainership of a driver having the O'Reilly 802.11 style book to give you a background into 802.11. You don't need to have read the spec. Um, some parts of the driver, like say calculating, um, what, some, some drivers want you to put say the, 
the 802.11 preamble code in the PLCP. You need to know where it is in the spec. And you need to know things like, like the definitions of the, the timing, the interframe spacing timing. And you can look those up in the spec. But you don't need to read the spec to know it. 90% of picking up something like the Marvel driver is going to be um, being familiar with device drivers and a bit of wireless and then lots of printf debugging. So I think that's an Indian and I think that's either an Indian issue. Like TX aggregation is, is either an Indian issue or it's a, um, a TX like sequence number initialization for aggregation issue. It doesn't look too complicated. I just I found it before I got on the plane here and I went, oh, I have to deal with it after. So. Yo. No. I don't think it does. And I don't think it does not because we can't make it work. I think it's firmware dependent, right? So I think the driver has some support for ad hoc mode, but it has to disable it based on the, the firmware support. You cannot use because Right. So what, you want to try and make your laptop speak to your iPhone yeah. in ad hoc mode? Right, okay, I don't know. Um, you, that question you could just dump on the wireless list and Bernard will know better. Um, and again, as I said, I've seen there's some code for ad hoc mode. The, the, so the reference at the moment, the reference for doing wireless stuff that's not Atheros drivers is Linux because the, the vendors are all dumping their stuff into Linux, right? Um, it's not that an interested party couldn't sign an NDA like Sam did with a bunch of other vendors and then start hacking on stuff and get, get the new chips sent to them. And you know, it's, it's mostly just a problem that the vendors actively support Linux and the open source community hasn't really picked up driver support and really engaged vendors all that close. And some people from other non-previously non projects will say that vendors are, are impossible to deal with. And what that translates as is vendors won't give us free access to everything versus vendors are impossible to deal with. So the, long an the short answer here, I guess, is it's possible, but chances are you'd have to find someone who wants to maintain it and look at the Linux code to see what that supports. And if the Linux code doesn't, then you have to talk to, um, you have to, talk to uh, Intel. And I've got contacts in Intel who would love for a BSD to, free BSD or any BSD developer to pick up development and run with it, and they'll give them all kinds of shit. I've got friends, contacts in Marvel that, you know, will quite happily deal with BSD community. I've apparently got contacts in Broadcom that'll do much the same. It's not that they don't want to; it's that they can't do the development themselves, uh, and no one's wanted to, no one's picked up the slack. So, yeah. Any other questions? Cool. Well, start using 11n. BSD supports 11n. God damn it. <laughs> I'm fed up with people saying we don't do 11n. It's a load of crap. Works perfectly good. All right.